YouTube team, keep it clean. What's going on? It's Engraven here with another video. And in this video, I'm here to share my post-game thoughts from the game that we all watch together. A lot of us, too. Shout out to everybody uh, that came through for the live stream. And real quick, shout out to y'all that just come through, period. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your days every day uh, to come through and spend about 20, 30 minutes with us. Sometimes, depending on how much is going on, it could be an hour a day with us. Uh, to talk about some Ravens and just some football in general. I, I appreciate y'all because, again, y'all have busy, busy, busy lives. We all have busy lives, but y'all still take the time to show love, so I appreciate it uh, a whole lot. And, and thank you to anybody that came through uh, and was part of the stream yesterday, too, because we had a lot of fun, like we always do. We had a whole lot of fun. Um, now, this game uh, between the Baltimore Ravens and the New England Patriots, my score prediction was 27-10. Um, and I was obviously way off. Uh, I, I thought that the defense, I thought they were going to uh, really contain Mac Jones, or should I call him Mac Vic, the way he was taking off uh, in the game. Um, but I, I thought that they were going to do a, a much better job against him, against Patriots offense, who were missing a lot of guys too. Um, and they, they did a lot of bending as far as against Matt Jones in the passing game particularly. Uh, but they, they did a whole lot of bending. But they didn't, they were close to breaking, but they didn't quite break. Because they gave up a lot of yards, but I don't think that they gave up a touchdown at all. Uh, but we'll talk about that. But the final score ended up being 37 to 26. And before we get into the individuals, um, thinking about collectively, the Ravens uh, as an offense, um, well, just their points as a whole. Uh, game one, they scored 24. Week two, they scored 38. Uh, and then week three, they scored 37. So they've been putting up some points. They've been putting up some points. Um, of course, against the Dolphins, it's a shame that they put up all those points and <laughs> it didn't end up being a victory, but it is what it is. Uh, so three games into the season, Ravens are sitting at two and one, and that's good. That's good. It's not the best, but it's certainly not the worst at all, not even close uh, to being the worst. Um, so I'm, I'm cool with it. So let's see how things continue. Let's see uh, what type of consistency they do have moving forward. Now, somebody who has been extremely consistent uh, has been Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson. Now, let's talk about the bad first uh, because there wasn't really much of it. But we got to acknowledge what the bad was. The bad uh, with Lamar Jackson, the interception. That was just an amazing play uh, by, I want to say Jonathan Jones, but I don't want to say Jonathan Jones. Number 31 for the Patriots. I, I, I do not remember or know what his name is, uh, so y'all can put it in the comments section. Um, but that was a great, phenomenal play. Um, Rashad Bateman was coming across the field. Duvernay, he was going up the field. Uh, so, looked like Lamar Jackson, that the ball was intended for Rashad Bateman. So Lamar Jackson threw it, but he must have thought that the cornerback who was covering Duvernay was going to stick, stick with Duvernay, but he dropped off of Duvernay, and Lamar Jackson ain't even see him. It was a perfect defensive play, perfect defensive play. So Lamar just, again, that was on him. He did not see that cornerback drop off, or maybe he didn't anticipate the cornerback dropping off, and the cornerback made a great interception. Uh, so shout out to him. Um, but Lamar was like, oh, okay, <laughs> that's going to be the last bad interception that you see out of me today. Well, really the last interception that you see out of me. Um, and it's with, like with Lamar Jackson's uh, two interceptions this year, uh, they've both been on plays where, well, the, the, the first one, he should have just put it out a little more uh, to the outside. But, um, and then the second one, again, that just not noticing the defender. Um, but, hey, he has made up for it in a large way. I think Lamar's thrown three touchdowns every, at least three touchdowns every game this year so far, and that's a, that's an excellent start, I'd say. Um, but yeah, in this game, he threw four touchdowns, um, and then he ran for one. So we did get a Jackson five. There's a lot of people who actually predicted a Jackson five this uh, game, um, and he delivered. Uh, so Lamar Jackson, um, early on in the game, it was just tight ends, tight ends, tight ends. The receivers were not getting anything. At all. Uh, in fact, I think the, the, the first pass that was looking like it was going to receive it, that's the interception. But early on, it was just tight ends, tight ends, tight ends. 
And Mark Andrews, of course, he he got his drop out the way. He did the same thing last week, too. He got his drop out the way early. Um, and then after that, he just started catching everything, making some crazy catches, uh, using McCourty um, to, 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 to sort of get the ball up to his hands to, to reel it in like he was fishing on McCourty's back or something like that um, on that touchdown pass. Uh, but it was just it was a beautiful thing to see uh, once Mark Andrews actually got going. Um, Lamar Jackson, he uh, continues to be uh, the biggest part of Ravens run game. Uh, which did look a little better um, in the few times that it was used. Uh, but Lamar Jackson continues to be um, the biggest part of Ravens' run game. Um, just looking at his numbers individually uh, running the ball, um, he had 11 carries for 107 yards and one touchdown. What was crazy, um, on the touchdown play, it was, was it third down? I think it was third down. Um, but I was like, oh, no, I hope this is not a Lamar keeper. Because what I thought the Ravens were going to do, because it, it was looking like they were setting up to do it, I was thinking the Ravens, they were going to have Lamar in the shotgun, like they did. Uh, they're going to have a running back next to him, maybe motion pad record. But everything was looking like the setup for, the, for what we know as the norm, where they snapped the ball and Lamar Jackson, this is like a, what is called a QB power, I think, where Lamar Jackson just keeps it. And tries to follow some blocks and get in the end zone. That's what I thought was going to happen. And I was like, oh, oh, oh boy, here, here they go. They about to do it. But I was so happy when they did the little option play. That where Lamar faked it to the running back, but then ended up keeping it. Made somebody miss and then got a touchdown. Like something so simple, like a fake handoff. That made the world of a difference. Made the world of a difference. Because it just, it takes away, even for a split second, it causes the defense to hesitate and like, okay, is he keeping the ball or is he handing the ball off? And that split second makes such a big difference because that'll allow Lamar Jackson as the quarterback, if he's keeping the ball, that'll allow him a split second to process everything. All right, where am I, where am I about to go? Or if it's J.K. Dobbins or Justice Hill, whoever the running back may be, it allows them to decide, all right. I'm about to cut up, I'm about to go up the middle, I'm about to cut to the left, whatever they're going to do. So it, it, just, it just pauses the defense real quick and makes them make quick decisions. And if they pause and make a great decision, hey, it works out. But a lot of times they could pause and make the wrong decision or a bad decision, and that'll benefit the offense. So I just I, I had loved that, that play call because I was thinking it was going a completely different uh, direction. But anyway, Lamar Jackson uh, on the Mark Andrews pass where he caught it over Devin McCourty. But Lamar Jackson was actually, he was on one foot. He was falling backwards and threw it up. He threw it up. And it, it was a, a beautiful thing. Um, shout out to Josh Oliver. Josh Oliver even got involved. He got him a touchdown too. I was like, okay, Josh, let's get it, Josh. So that was nice to see. Um, and then Mark Andrews, he, of course, uh, he got another touchdown on the shovel pass. And I was like, wow, they actually incorporated a shovel pass. Um, and we were talking about it uh, during the stream. I was like, man, uh, with the Ravens, they, that's not normally what they do. But I think um, my guy's name was uh, Ricky because he sent in a question from he, he's from Germany. He sent in a question from subscribers. Um, talking about the Raven, yeah, Rick, Rick D, uh, from Germany. He sent in a question from subscriber last week that we, we, we talked about. And one of his questions was about the Ravens offense and different strategies that they can use. And he said, the shovel pass Lamar can throw all the angles and it's a good short yardage option. We do struggle with lately saying we struggle with short yardage because Ravens have, it's been an issue. Um, and to see them incorporated right after I said, hold up, they, the, the, the Ravens, they've been watching? They, are they part of team Keep It Clean? It seemed that way. I don't know. Uh, but then, you know, with, uh, with, with Ravens, with Greg Roman, they, 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 they do something and it works. They're like, oh, yeah, we, let, let, let's do it again, especially if it's something new. And they, they did another little shovel pass with uh, Isaiah Likely. But um, I said, oh, it's all good, man. But, yeah, it, it, it was nice to see that. It was nice to see, like, I said, there goes that 20%. That they were talking about. There it goes. It's been being, being sprinkled in here and there. Uh, and we love it. We love it. Because that adds diversity to the Baltimore Ravens offense. And this offense, they've been doing, they've been putting in work, man. They've been doing their thing this year. So far, and they're not even fully healthy. They're not even at their best yet. 
and they still been doing this, which is it's a beautiful thing. Um, who else? Oh, the past of Devin Duvernay. Well, that boy Devin Duvernay, he been doing his thing, ain't he? Devin Duvernay, um, he is really establishing himself like as a wide receiver, and I love it. I love it. Same conversation. Got to go back to it. Again, y'all know I, I wanted Ravens to go get somebody at wide receiver. Somebody like that. They didn't do it. So, okay. So, they, they've been using their guys. This game, they use them a little bit less. Use their guys a little bit less. But they tried. They certainly tried. It wasn't for a lack of effort uh, in, with, when it came to using the receivers in this game. And Devin Duvernay with that touchdown catch. And especially to, to be able to make the touchdown catch, have the defender all over you and get the two feet down, man. That thing was beautiful, man. It was beautiful. And you remember how that got set up? With a beautiful punt return that could have went for a touchdown, but that punter just knocked him out, and then he sort of, his momentum carried him out of bounds, man. So he, Duvernay and the Ravens were like, hey, Duvernay, you should have got a touchdown on that punt return, but we got you. We got you. Um, so shout out to him. Duvernay is having a season, man. He is having a season. So he had two touchdowns. Uh, in week one Then he had the kickoff return For a touchdown in week two And now he had a touchdown catch uh, In week three So shout out to him The man scored every game Every single game Duvernay has scored this year So Hey <laughs> I love it Love it um, But yeah great throw Of course from Lamar Jackson To, uh, to Devin Duvernay on that play um, but yeah, that that was that. As far as Lamar, uh, he was he tried with Bateman. He 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 was trying with Bateman, and you knew they were gonna try. Um, he tried to hit him on that deep pass, but it looked like it it was a mix of <sighs> Bateman could have probably laid out and like really went to go get it. Um, but it, it could have also if yeah, I think Bateman could have laid out for it, but Lamar could have he could have put a tiny tiny bit less on it. But you don't want to put too much less on it because you don't want the defender to be able to make a play. So, yeah, if Bateman would have, like, dove for it, he, he could have got it. But it's all good, man. Um, it's all good. Now, the catch that Bateman did catch. Now, it was a couple of them, man. Now, one of them where uh, Bateman was like, look, you, you caught a pick on my boy earlier to 31 on the Patriots. So, I got you one-on-one. -on -one. And one-on-one, -on -one, Bateman hit him with the ah, ah, ah. At 31, he, he just got caught slipping, man. Bateman took his ankles quick, got all that yak. I loved it, man. I loved it. But then later on in the game, uh, that whole fumble thing, that, that should have been an incompletion. That should have been an incompletion. Uh, the one they called a fumble on Bateman. And I was wondering, like, why are Ravens not challenging this? But maybe they were like, you know what? With the, the, the little bit of time that's left in this game, we want all of our timeouts. Uh, to we want to have as many timeouts as we possibly can, just in case they don't overturn this thing. And I was like, oh, well, okay. But I thought that should have been challenged because it Bateman never fully had control of that ball, and I, I was surprised that they were like, oh yeah, that's a fumble and recovered by the uh, the defense. And I was like, okay, well, whatever. But yeah, uh, they got to hold on to that though. You got, you got to hold on to it. But, hey, stuff happens. None of the players are perfect. They're going to make mistakes. So, it's all good. As long as you make more plays than mistakes, you got it. You'll, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Um, Nick Boyle, he was active for this game. Didn't see him at all. Mike Davis, he was active for this game. And I was surprised that he was active uh, over King and Drake because I just thought Ravens just – not that they didn't want anything to do with Mike Davis, but just I, th I thought that they just – they wanted to really limit his opportunity. Um, just because of how things had gone, especially last week. Uh, and they just really didn't want to involve him. Now, I, I know somebody said that he played a snap. I, I didn't see him at all, but somebody said that he played a snap. So I guess Ravens continue to show like, mm, Mike Davis, uh, yeah. So, because again, you can, um, actions speak louder than words. They speak a whole lot louder than words, especially in football. Um, a team can say this, that, and a third about you, but let's see how they play you. Let's see how they involve you in the game plan. They didn't involve Mike Davis at all. So it could be just a temporary thing. We'll see. We, we just got to wait and see how everything plays itself out. Um, Justice Hill. 
uh, in he had ten carries for like sixty yards, something like that. Uh, but Justice Hill, he looked good in the game today. Uh, yeah, oh, six carries for sixty yards. That's what it was. He averaged ten yards a carry. Uh, of course, he had his uh, the one the long one that he broke. And Justice Hill just tired. He was tired of everybody talking about it, the, the the lack of vision that he had on that last week, that run last week. Where everybody thought he should have got a touchdown and whatnot. But he looked good. I thought he was going to start. Even with J.K. coming back, I thought that Justice Hill was going to start. But they said, no, J.K. is the starter. Uh, but Justice Hill got more carries than him. Because J.K., uh, he had seven carries for 23 yards. So while he didn't, like, pop off or anything like that, he did look good uh, <laughs> on his first on his first either catch or first carry, I think it might have been a catch. What was it? I don't remember what it, whether it was a catch or a carry. Where he gave that nasty stiff arm. Or like, I think first drive of the game. Ooh, that thing was nasty. I said, JK, chill out, JK. That's too much, JK. Relax, JK. But he looked good. He looked good. So um, I expect them to continue to ramp, ramp him up uh, as the, uh, the season goes along. Um... So, yeah, that, that was pretty much it for the offense and the pass catches and everything. Oh, yeah, Pat Ricard, he did have a catch, too. See, I got, I got the stats pulled up because I'm trying my best not to forget anybody. But Pat Ricard did have that catch, too. It went for a long one. It was almost a first down. It got them super close. Uh, but it set them up nicely. Um, but, yeah, that was that. Mark Andrews led the way. Eight catches for 89 yards and two touchdowns. Um, offensive line, who <laughs> is not on the stat sheet. Uh, Patrick McCary, he was, of course, in filling in for the Ronnie Stanley. Um, and at one point, Jawan James was filling in for Ronnie Stanley, but Jawan James got hurt. And then Patrick McCary, he was filling in for Ronnie Stanley. Patrick McCary got hurt. Um, so Daniel Filele, big boy, he, he got in there. Um, early on, it was rough. Really, for the whole offensive line, early on, it was rough. Patriots were like, they were just getting straight through. They were getting so much pressure. They they sacked Lamar a couple times. Um, they were just getting straight through. Lamar had to run for his life quite a bit. Um, so yeah, offensive line was uh they struggled a bit, but I did like how the Ravens made adjustments. Even Matt Judon got credited with a sack. Um, so yeah, that's when Lamar and, and Matt Judon played it so smart. He played it so smart. Lamar tried to shake him, tried to make him miss, and it was somebody else who did the same thing. I forget what, I think it was number 91. I think it was number 91 on the Patriots. Where Lamar tried to make a miss, but he didn't, he, he let Lamar do all that. And he just stood there and waited and just closed in on him. And it was, it was a great play by him. Great play by, um, by him. Uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't remember what his name was. My apologies. But yeah, um, offensive line, it was, oof. I saw Ben Powers getting pushed back uh, quite a bit. Really, the whole offensive line got pushed back. Um, Morgan Moses, he had a false start, but that I think that was the result of them getting pushed back so much so early on, uh, because he wanted to make sure he had a jump on the defense, uh, but he ended up just giving a jump start to make us lose five yards. But it, it's cool, it's cool again. Mistakes happen, it's it is what it is, they're gonna happen, but it's about how you correct those mistakes, how you make adjustments. And Ravens offense, they made the proper adjustments to really slow the Patriots' defense down. Again, really getting into that option and all the RPO stuff and whatnot. That was part of the adjustment. Because, again, Patriots' defense, they were crashing. Matt Judon, he was dancing, having a good time and whatnot. Celebrating when Ravens got the uh, the, 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 the uh, false start and whatnot. He, he was having a good day. Uh, but then Ravens were like, hold up. Let, let's change some stuff up. So they did a good job of, of halftime adjustment. So shout out to them. Um, special teams, uh, Justin Tucker. So that's it for the offense. Lamar Jackson, he is really like, he's really having an MVP season. And I know a lot of people was thinking, oh, yeah, Lamar, he could have an MVP season this year. and da, 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 da. But so far, like right now, he actually is. Um, right now, through the first three games, uh he has oh, 10, 10 touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns, um, and two picks. So Lamar has been, he's been balling. He's been balling. Um, <clears throat> Price continues to increase. Price continues to uh, skyrocket. So, hey, we'll, we'll see how uh, that goes when they cross that bridge. Um, now on to the uh, special teams. Justin Tucker, he had he had a fifth, what a fifty-six yard field goal, fifty-six yard field goal. 
That boy is this real deal, man. Real deal. Uh, but then he missed the uh, point after touchdown. But like I said during the stream, Justin Tucker, for me, it's like he, he's going to get a pass for, for missing a point after touchdown. He's going to get a pass from me, for sure. I think he deserves a pass from everybody just because of how much he's literally done for this team ever since 2012. And obviously including the 2012 season, the Super Bowl year. Justin Tucker, ha he has been... I know things have changed now before. He was a leading scorer for the Ravens. Because <laughs> the offense was just, they were doing enough to, to get, get by. Well, get by the 50-yard line. <laughs> then after that, they were like, Pfft. then out, out comes Justin Tucker. So he, uh, he, got, he got a pass from me. Um, Mac Jones getting into, uh, again, oh, special team. We talked about Devin Duvernay with that nice punt return. Um, yeah, Jordan Stout, he had a couple of rough punts. Yeah, some good, but yeah. Um, but yeah, not a bad day from special teams. But um defense. Oh, the defense. Oh, the defense. Wow. Um, a lot of work to do still. Uh, but credit to uh Bill Belichick and Mac Jones. Because Mac Jones was and, and whoever's calling the offensive plays, I don't know if it's Matt Patricia or who. But the Patriots coaching staff. They coached Mac Jones up so well in this game. Um, and he followed through with something that had to be obvious that they were coaching him up on. Take advantage of Ravens' young corners. Mac Jones was doing that all game or early on in the game. Well, really all game. Take advantage of Ravens' young corners. Jalen Armour Davis, <coughs> he was on Devontae Parker. And I kept saying throughout the stream, Devontae Parker, this was his way of telling the Dolphins, hey, come get me. Come bring me back. I want to be with Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle too. Y'all see I could go off too. This dude had, what, five or six catches for 156 yards? He was going off. He was going off, but usually on him, it would be Jalen Armour Davis. It would be Pepe Williams. And, all, and there was one play that he caught where Ravens were in zone, and it was uh, Chuck Clark. He, he came over a little bit late. But as far as when they were in man, it was usually the young guys that were on him. And even uh, Brandon Stevens, too. Now, there was one play where I think Jacoby, not Jacoby Myers, I was about to say Jacoby Myers, Devontae Parker, he caught it on like the two-yard line, something like that. But And Brandon Stevens was on him in coverage, but most corners ain't making that play. Because Brandon Stevens did not have bad coverage on him. It was just such a perfect throw and pass from Mac Jones. It was like a back shoulder throw. It was perfect. The timing of it was perfect. The route was perfect. Mac Jones' throw, timing, the placement, everything was perfect. So it was like almost like Brandon Stevens couldn't even do anything. But he, uh, Devontae Parker, and just really the, he was, he was working those Ravens cornerbacks. He was working them big time. Except for Marcus Peters and Marlon Humphrey. Coincidence? I think not. I think not. Looking at Mac Jones' day today, and again, Mac Vick, because there was some time he was taking off. Um, he passed, he went 22 for 32 for 321 yards. So Ravens still give, giving up a lot through the year. A whole lot. Um, he didn't throw any touchdowns, though. That's what I was talking about earlier. Ravens did a lot of bending. But they, they didn't break as far as through the air. They did a lot of bending. They were bending all the way back. But they didn't break. And though it seemed like they were. It felt like they were. Uh, but they didn't. Mac Jones, um, we talked about this in our game preview. Now, we know Mac Jones can move a little bit. We know he ain't like crazy fast or anything. But he, again, he was, he was Mac Vick yesterday. He was Mac Vick ye yesterday. And he, uh, he was doing his thing. Um, he ran for 31 yards, uh, got him a touchdown, too. Oh, on that touchdown. See, this is why I pull up the stats so I don't forget anything. Um, on the touchdown, Ravens played really good. They were playing good defense. They had everything covered. But that's one of the most frustrating things about when you play good defense, you got everything covered, quarterback takes off. That's, and it's like, oh, it's like, oh, so frustrating because it's like, oh, we felt like we did our part. We feel like we had this thing locked down. Then the quarterback takes off. So, oh, he got it. So, yeah, that was, that was tough for him. Um, then there was uh, just talking about missed opportunities. Uh, Stevenson, 
Stevenson, that I, I love, okay, Ramondre. He I, I love the way that he runs. When he took his helmet off, he reminded me of Lil Wayne a little bit. But I love the way he runs because he's not the fastest, but he's a very patient, very smart runner. Uh, he makes quick decisions. He, he's very smooth, too. Very smooth with his cuts and whatnot. So I, I, I loved watching him run. I did not love that it was on the Ravens defense, but I, I did love watching him run. I, I like his style uh, of running. So he, 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 he was nice. Uh, he was nice. So he got him a touchdown. Um, who else got a touchdown? Harris. He got a touchdown, too? Oh, that is Damian Harris. Okay. I ain't even realized, man. When did he get his touchdown? Was that, was that that questionable touchdown where it looked like he might not even crossed initially? I think that was it. But either way, um, Ravens through the air. Um, they, again, bend but don't break. But on the ground, uh, they, <laughs> they broke a couple times. Um, missed opportunities. Uh, we talked about how um, with Devontae Parker, he went off five for 156. That was it. Yeah, five for 156. Uh, Kendrick Bourne had four for 58. Nelson Aguilar, he had two for 41. Now, um, with uh, Patrick Queen. Oh, man, Patrick Queen, uh, that well, would have been a pick. Because there wasn't nobody catching Patrick Queen. That, oh, man, that was tough. And I felt for him, too, man. Because I, I feel for Patrick Queen because Patrick Queen... His mind, he got it up here, he, and he's getting it more and more. Um, but sometimes, just he'll he'll miss it that because he'll he'll be around the play, he'll be around the ball, he'll he'll be around it. But sometimes he just won't make the play. So I know that that's got to be super frustrating for him, because uh, you know he holds himself to a high standard. So hopefully things will uh, improve and just continue to improve. Because again. If you got it up here, that's I think that's where the, the hardest place to get it. That's the hardest place to get it because somebody could be the fastest, they could be the strongest, they could be the best tackler in the world, they could be the best catcher in the world. But if they don't got it up here, then all that stuff won't even matter. But for Patrick Queen, it, 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 it's happening up here. But the 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 tackling has been an issue. Um, so again, hopefully he uh, just continues to improve throughout the year, gets more and more comfortable throughout the year. Uh, it makes play because he did have a sack today too. He had a sack. So and again, Patrick Queen, lightning, lightning, flying, flies around, man. So that was nice to see. I was happy for him. He got that sack. So with Patrick Queen, it's just about building up more and more plays, more and more good plays than bad plays, and just building up the level of consistency. He can get there. It's just it's it's, it's gonna take some time, man. It's gonna definitely take some time. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. Josh Bynes, he caught one of Mac Jones' three interceptions. Uh, and Josh Bynes, again, that's what I was just talking about, too. When you got it up here, you'll be at the right place at the right time, and it's up to you to just finish the play. He finished it. He finished it. I think he had like 10 or 12 tackles. I think he had 10 tackles today. So he, he was out there a lot. Um, and he, he read Mac Jones, and that's a veteran guy, like a veteran, veteran guy. Again, he played with Ray Lewis as he played with Ed Reeves and all. He he, he been around um, versus a young young quarterback, young Mac Jones, and he ran him perfectly and picked it off perfectly. Uh, the other two picks, um, pressure, pressure. Marlon Humphrey his pick uh, with Mac Jones. Mac Jones got pressure from Pepe Williams. Pepe Williams. They sent Pepe Williams on a blitz. Uh, Mac Jones threw it up. Marlon Humphrey was one on one with um, Devontae Parker. And it's funny, I think Devontae Parker, the majority of his yards, they came in the first half. After that, Ravens made adjustments, and he was quiet. He didn't hear much from him after that. But with um, Marlon Humphrey, yeah, they, the Ravens got pressure, and Marlon Humphrey played it good. He played it perfectly. Then he picked it off. <laughs> so, and he was hyped. Like, he was hyped. And I was hyped for him. I was happy for him, too. Because Marlon Humphrey got that pick, and he looked, like, genuinely happy. Like, I don't think I've ever seen, well, yeah, I ain't seen him that happy in a long time. In a long, like, he looked super happy, super excited, like it was on another level. And, like, you felt good for him. Like, okay, there you go. Shout out to Hump. And Marlon Humphrey, he had a quiet game besides the pick. But he wasn't giving up a bunch of catches or anything like that. I think he gave up, like, one catch. I, I, I think I remember him giving up one catch. Marcus Peters, too. Marcus Peters had a pretty quiet game, too. 
I don't remember him really giving up anything. And then Marcus Peters, he ended up catching an interception as well. So it was a nice little welcome back interception for Marcus Peters. I loved it. I loved it. Um, pressure uh, from the uh, pass rush is it, still an issue. Still a problem. Um, it was not a coincidence that when the Ravens actually did get pressure on Mac Jones, it resulted in bad place for the most part. But no pressure, it's going to make his job easier. Um, but, yeah, the, the, the pressure is a problem. And then now with Michael Pierce, uh, who knows by the time you see this video uh, if we'll have the information on him yet. Because um, I'm recording this on it's Sunday evening. It's Sunday at 6.47 p.m. Um, but he got hurt. And with John Harbaugh, the way John Harbaugh spoke about it, it sounds like it's really bad. And to me, this is just my opinion. Didn't hear anything, don't know anything. But it sounds like, because he said that Pierce would have a decision to make. It sounds like it could be one of those things where they allow Pierce to either get surgery or allow Pierce to hope that it heals uh, from rehab. That's what it sounds like to me. We'll see what happens later on tomorrow. Well, yeah, tomorrow. Today when you're seeing this later on, they should know by but. Yeah, man, that, and that sucks because Michael Pierce, he was like, he was a forgotten free agent for me. A lot of times when you think about Ravens free agency this offseason, I forget that they signed Michael Pierce, but he has been really good. He's been really, really good. Really good. So that's going to be a big blow. Uh, but that, that'll really make, however long he's out for, it sounds like it's going to be a long while. Um, but that's just forces Travis Jones to, uh, to grow up fast. To grow up really, really fast. Um, so we'll see. But yeah, um, so he's expected to be out for a while. Patrick McCarry, we'll see how long he's out. Har Harbaugh said it wasn't anything serious. So I'm thinking he'll be out like two to three weeks. I think Harbaugh said it might have been like a strain or something. I forgot what he said it was. But I think that McCarry will be out like two to three weeks. Um, so if it's up to Falele, man. And Ronnie Stanley, maybe. We'll, we'll see what Ronnie Stanley don't know yet. Um... But, yeah, back to defense. Uh, Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton, he grabbed everything that everybody said about him. Oh, I'm a bust. I suck. I can't tackle. I'm not a playmaker. Ravens should have never drafted me. I was drafted too high. I'm not even all that at safety. Ravens should have never picked me up. I shouldn't even be here right now. I'm terrible in this. I'm terrible in that. He took all of that, balled it up. In his hand. And pow. Forced that fumble. He took everything. Because he. It just went. It was just so beautiful. Because you saw him. Pull up his hand. And pow. Knock it out. And that was a play that I felt like he needed. I was so glad for him when he made that play. Because. As we know last week for him especially was rough. It was rough. And he took accountability. When he, when he spoke to the media and whatnot, and that's, that's where it starts with being accountable. Uh, but then being accountable isn't enough. It's important that you try to right your wrongs. And he did that. He made a huge play to Marcus Peters. He recovered the fumble inbounds, and that was, that was great. Because, again, he needed that. He needed that bad. Um, so I was happy. Um, Jalen Armour Davis, uh, he had a rough game. He was um, just giving up a lot uh, early on. And often, um, Pepe Williams, he, man, there was a catch. I think it was Devontae Parker. With Devontae Parker, he, uh, he cut across the middle of the field. Oh, oh oops. I'm over here trying to remember to play. I'm knocking the mic out. With Devontae Parker cut across the middle of the field, and Pepe Williams, Mac Jones threw, and Pepe Williams was going, trying to swat it, and he just missed it. So with Pepe Williams, um, he... He gave up a lot less separation than Jalen Alma Davis did, but he still, in the end, just couldn't close all the way, and he still would give up the catch. Uh, but again, it's, it's a work in progress. I, I'm not like, oh, man, these guys suck. They're terrible. These rookies are busts, and Ravens should never just. No, it's, it's a process. Making that transition, especially at cornerback. Cornerback, one of the hardest positions in the NFL to play because you can't even blink at the receiver the wrong way or else it'll be a 15-yard flag. So these boys, it's going to take some time with them. It's going to take some time for them to really get acclimated to the NFL. Um, but it's, they're they, they, they going to be able to do it. They're going to be able to do it. 
Um, Copeland, who just got called up from the practice squad, uh, he got a sack today. So I was like, okay, Copeland, there you go, man. Um, but these Ravens, they uh, it's kind of sad the state that the pass rush is in because it's, it's just really bad. Um, it's like they they like need JPP. I, I I keep saying that I don't expect him to be the JPP of old, and I don't. But it's like it's it's almost like the Ravens they need they desperately need JPP to give him some some little throwback from from the Giants, please. Even from the Bucks too. They they really I think they really need him to be really good, fast. Um, they they really need him maximized. But, oh, Justin Houston, because Justin Houston he had a groin injury, so he got knocked out of the game too. So I don't think that'll be anything serious. That could be like a week to week thing, like actually a real week to week thing, um, depending on how it's going. But so it's like, man, so Justin Houston hurt, um, Michael Pierce hurt, um, Adafi away. He, whew, he was getting double team. But then at the same time, with when it was one on one, uh, he he wasn't really. I didn't really see him winning like that. Let me know if I was wrong though. But so yeah, we'll see with him. I was hoping that this game would be a game where he could like shake off some of that stuff. And again, he he's a project. He's a first round pick project player uh, because again, he's very very raw. Um, so I don't know. Ho hopefully things will really turn around for him. Uh, really, really, really soon. Shout out to, to Carter playing with the dogs. Um, but yeah, man, so this this defense, this defense really, uh, they really got some things that they got to work on uh, moving forward. They got a lot of fine tuning that they need to do. Um, it was nice to see the, the Marlon Humphrey, Marcus Peters healthy and playing a, a whole game today. It was nice to see that. Um, but their other guy, that that's that's where the struggle really came in at. I think the the other guys besides Marcus Peters, besides Marlon Humphrey, it was all the rest of the corners that in this game they 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 struggle. But again, that was kudos to the Patriots for attacking that. Kudos to the Patriots for recognizing what the Ravens' issue was and going right at it. That was that was so smart of them, so smart, and that's what you got to do. As an offense, as a defense, whatever, you got to try to attack your opponent's biggest weakness. So Patriots, they went after that all game. Um, thank goodness, though, that they didn't succeed. Uh, so, yeah, man, great game, fun game to watch. Um, and, yeah, I wish some things could have went better here and there. But the most important thing that happened, Ravens got the win. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.